you will listen to three conversations, two times for each. Without, and with a script. Let's start. Hey, I hear you and Stephanie are really getting serious. Yeah, and I think she'll be impressed with my new exercise program. What? What are you talking about? What exercise program? What did you tell her? Well, you know, I enjoy staying in shape. Right. First, I generally get up every morning at 5.30 a.m. Oh, yeah. Since when? You don't route a bed until at least 7.30 p.m. <laughs> no, no. And on Mondays and oh, Wednesdays, that's not another tall tale. I almost always go jogging for about half hour, you know, to improve my endurance. Hey, jogging in the refrigerator for a glass of milk doesn't count. And of course, before I leave, I usually make sure to do some stretches so I don't uh, pull a muscle on my run. Right, one jumping jack. <laughs> then I told her that I usually lift weights Tuesdays and Thursdays for about an hour after work. Huh. This helps me build muscle strength. One pound barbell. <laughs> oh, no. And finally, I often go jogging on Saturdays with my dog. What dog? Uh, well, and I like hiking because it helps me burn off stress and reduce anxiety that builds up during the week. Oh, yeah, those lies. Uh, well, uh, as for Fridays, I sometimes just relax at home by watching a movie or inviting you over to visit. If I buy the pizza. But, and, I, and on Sundays, I take the day off from exercising, but I usually take my dog for a walk. Forget it. She'll never buy this story. Hey, I hear you and Stephanie are really getting serious. Yeah, and I think she'll be impressed with my new exercise program. What? What are you talking about? What exercise program? What did you tell her? Well, you know, I enjoy staying in shape. Right. First, I generally get up every morning at 5.30 a.m. Oh, yeah. Since when? You don't route a bed until at least 7.30 p.m.? <laughs> no, oh, no. And on Mondays and oh, Wednesdays, that's not another tall tale. I almost always go jogging for about half hour, you know, to improve my endurance. Hey, jogging in the refrigerator for a glass of milk doesn't count. And of course, before I leave, I usually make sure to do some stretches so I don't uh, pull a muscle on my run. Right, one jumping jack. <laughs> then I told her that I usually lift weights Tuesdays and Thursdays for about an hour after work. Huh. This helps me build muscle strength. One pound barbell. <laughs> oh, no. And finally, I often go jogging on Saturdays with my dog. What dog? Um, well, and I like hiking because it helps me burn off stress and reduce anxiety that builds up during the week. Oh, yeah, those lies. Uh, well, and as for Fridays, I sometimes just relax at home by watching a movie or inviting you over to visit. If I buy the pizza. But, and, I, and on Sundays, I take the day off from exercising, but I usually take my dog for a walk. Forget it. She'll never buy this story. English Language Center, how may I help you? Yes, I'm calling to find out more information about your program. For example, what kind of courses do you offer? Well, first of all, the purpose of our program is to provide language learning opportunities to this area's community. Mm -hmm. Whether a student's goal is to master basic functional language skills, let's say for his or her job, or to study intensively to enter a U.S. college or university. Okay. I'm calling for a friend who's interested in attending a U.S. university. And that's the kind of uh, instruction that we provide, from basic communication courses to content-based classes such as literacy, intercultural communication, and business English. Great. What are your application deadlines for the next semester? Well, we ask applicants to apply no later than two months before the semester begins. Mm -hmm. This gives us time to process the application and issue the student's I-20. An I-20? Oh, an I-20 is a form that indicates that we are giving permission for the student to study in our program. And then the student takes this form to the U.S. Embassy in his or her country to apply for the F-1 student visa. All right. What is the tuition for a full-time student? It's $2,030. And how does one apply? Well, we can send you an application and you can mail that to us, or you can fill out our application that's online at our website. And are there other materials I would need to send in addition to the application form? Uh, yes, you would need to send in a $35 non-refundable application fee, mm -hmm. a sponsorship form indicating who will be responsible financially for the student while studying in our program, and a bank statement showing that you or your sponsor has sufficient funds to cover tuition and expenses and living costs for the entire year of study. And how can I send these materials to you? You can either send the application packet by regular mail or you can fax it. And the application fee? We accept money orders, traveler's checks, or credit cards. All right, I think that's about it. Okay, great. Oh, and what is your name? Okay, my name is Tony Nelson. You can just call and ask for me. Great, thank you for your help. No problem, man. Please don't hesitate to call again if you have any other questions. Okay, goodbye. English Language Center, how may I help you? Yes, I'm calling to find out more information about your program. For example, what kind of courses do you offer? 
Well, first of all, the purpose of our program is to provide language learning opportunities to this area's community.、Mm -hmm. Whether a student's goal is to master basic functional language skills, let's say for his or her job, or to study intensively to enter a U.S. college or university. Okay, I'm calling for a friend who's interested in attending a U.S. university. And that's the kind of、uh, instruction that we provide, from basic communication courses to Content-based classes such as literacy, intercultural communication, and business English. Great. What are your application deadlines for the next semester? Well, we ask applicants to apply no later than two months before the semester begins.、Mm -hmm. This gives us time to process the application and issue the student's I-20. An I-20? Oh, an I-20 is a form that indicates that we are giving permission for the student to study in our program, and then the student takes this form to the U.S. Embassy in his or her country. To apply for the F1 student visa. All right. What is the tuition for a full-time student? It's two thousand thirty dollars. And how does one apply? Well, we can send you an application, and you can mail that to us, or you can fill out our application that's online at our website. And are there other materials I would need to send in, in addition to the application form? Uh, yes. You would need to send in a thirty-five dollar non-refundable application fee,、mm -hmm. a sponsorship form indicating who will be responsible financially for the student. While studying in our program, and a bank statement showing that you or your sponsor has sufficient funds to cover tuition and expenses and living costs for the entire year of study. And how can I send these materials to you? You can either send the application packet by regular mail, or you can fax it. And the application fee? We accept money orders, traveler's checks, or credit cards. All right, I think that's about it. Okay, great. Oh, and what is your name? Okay, my name is Tony Nelson. You can just call and ask for me. Great, thank you for your help. No problem, man. Please don't hesitate to call again if you have any other questions. Okay, goodbye. Hello. Hi, I'm calling about the ad for the apartment found in today's newspaper. Okay. I'm kind of desperate, and I need something right away. Okay, what would you like to know? First of all, how big is it? It's a two-bedroom apartment with a living room, dining room, and kitchen, and one bathroom. There is also a place for a washer and dryer. Okay. And how old is the apartment complex? Well, let's just say it has a lot of history. To be honest, my great grandfather built it during the 1920s, but it's a very sturdy and sound structure. Oh. And so, is the apartment furnished at all? Oh yeah, the apartment is partially furnished with a refrigerator, stove, and my grandmother's old dishwasher. Your grandmother's old dishwasher? Well, yep.、Yeah. Okay, what's the rent? It's nine hundred and fifty dollars a month. Whoa, that is a little steep for me. But you could always split the cost with a roommate. Perhaps. Does that include utilities? Well, the rent includes gas and electricity, but not the phone bill. And the water pump is right out the back door. Water pump? Yeah. Oh yeah.、Hmm. Well, can I rent month to month, or do I have to sign a lease for a longer period of time? We require a six-month commitment for the apartment, and if you cancel the agreement any time during that period, hey, you lose your deposit. Oh. And how much is the deposit? It's four hundred dollars, and of course, this money is used to repair damage or general wear and tear on our apartment, like the leaks in the old roof from last year's snowstorm. Man, that was ugly! Plaster falling down from the ceiling, and I didn't even know there was a rat's nest up there. But we got that taken care of. A what?、Oh. Do I get my deposit back after I move out? That's assuming I even move in. Generally speaking, we return the deposit minus a small fee for you know cleaning the apartment for the next tenant. But if you trash the place, then don't expect to get anything back. Okay. Oh, um, how close is the apartment to the university campus? It's about eight blocks from campus, but you can catch a number of buses right out in front. Oh, so then if there's a busy road out front, is it noisy? Well, there are always trade-offs. It's a little noisy with the road outside and the airport behind you, but the place is really convenient because there's a supermarket and shopping center across the street. Just keep the windows closed and a pair of earplugs handy, and you'll be fine. Okay. And one last question: Are there parking spaces for tenants? Yeah, the apartment has two covered parking spaces, which are really convenient during certain times of the year. Uh, I don't know. 
Is it possible for me to drop by and visit the apartment tomorrow morning? Sure, but just remember we rent the apartment on a first come first serve basis, so there's no guarantee it'll still be available then. Okay, thanks. Um, and where exactly is the apartment located? It's one block west of the wastewater treatment plant. Oh, are pets allowed? Well, you can keep small pets like a hamster in a small cage, but we don't allow larger animals like dogs, cats, or snakes, things like that. Um, I have a you rat. You don't you don't have anything like that, do you? Well, I have a rat that I keep in a cage. Will that be okay? Well, as long as it doesn't escape, I guess that's okay. And what's your name? It's Norman. Norman Bates. All right, Mr. Bates. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hi. I'm calling about the ad for the apartment found in today's newspaper. Okay. I'm kind of desperate, and I need something right away. Okay. What would you like to know? First of all, how big is it? It's a two-bedroom apartment with a living room, dining room, and kitchen, and one bathroom. There is also a place for a washer and dryer. Okay, and how old is the apartment complex? Well, let's just say it has a lot of history. To be honest, my great grandfather built it during the 1920s, but it's a very sturdy and sound structure. Oh, and so is the apartment furnished at all? Oh yeah, the apartment is partially furnished with a refrigerator, stove, and my grandmother's old dishwasher. Your grandmother's old dishwasher? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. What's the rent? It's nine hundred and fifty dollars a month. Whoa, that is a little steep for me. But you could always split the cost with a roommate. Perhaps. Does that include utilities? Well, the rent includes gas and electricity, but not the phone bill. And the water pump is right out the back door. Water pump? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, can I rent month to month, or do I have to sign a lease for a longer period of time? We require a six-month commitment for the apartment, and if you cancel the agreement any time during that period, hey, you lose your deposit. Oh, and how much is the deposit? It's four hundred dollars, and of course, this money is used to repair damage or general wear and tear on our apartment, like the leaks in the old roof from last year's snowstorm. Man, that was ugly! Plaster falling down from the ceiling, and I didn't even know there was a rat's nest up there. But we got that taken care of. A what? Oh. Do I get my deposit back after I move out? That's assuming I even move in. Generally speaking, we return the deposit minus a small fee for you know cleaning the apartment for the next tenant. But if you trash the place, then don't expect to get anything back. Okay. Oh, um, how close is the apartment to the university campus? It's about eight blocks from campus, but you can catch a number of buses right out in front. Oh, so then if there's a busy road out front. Is it noisy? Well, there are always trade-offs. It's a little noisy with the road outside and the airport behind you, but the place is really convenient because there's a supermarket and shopping center across the street. Just keep the windows closed and a pair of earplugs handy, and you'll be fine. Okay. And one last question: Are there parking spaces for tenants? Yeah, the apartment has two covered parking spaces, which are really convenient during certain times of the year. Uh. I don't know. Is it possible for me to drop by and visit the apartment tomorrow morning? Sure, but just remember we rent the apartment on a first come first serve basis, so there's no guarantee it'll still be available then. Okay, thanks. Um, and where exactly is the apartment located? It's one block west of the wastewater treatment plant. Oh, are pets allowed? Well. You can keep small pets like a hamster in a small cage, but we don't allow larger animals like dogs, cats, or snakes, things like that. Um, I have a you rat. You don't you don't have anything like that, do you? Well, I have a rat that I keep in a cage. Will that be okay? Well, as long as it doesn't escape, I guess that's okay. And what's your name? It's Norman. Norman Bates. All right, Mr. Bates. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.